So let's first draw a free body diagram of the car to kind of see what's going on here. So there's the road, these are the wheels, the car is moving. In order to kind of represent the frictional force, I've actually redrawn the diagram so that the car is meant to sort of be coming towards us in the diagram. Okay, so there are a few different forces. So first off, there's the weight from the car acting downwards. So that's the car's mass times the gravitational acceleration g. Acting upwards on the car from the ground is the normal force. And then because the car is rounding a level curve, according to the problem, there is going to be a force due to friction kind of opposing that, which I'll represent like this. This is the force due to friction. Now we can kind of ignore the forces from the weight and the normal force for now because they're canceling each other out. As far as we know, as far as the problem tells us, the car isn't accelerating vertically, so we assume they're equal. But what is important is the radial force, the centripetal force from the car's motion. Now the only force here is the friction, according to our free body diagram. So because the frictional force is the only horizontal force, we can assume that that is equal to the net force on the car. And the net force in this case is going to be a radial force due to that circular motion. So the radial force of the car is equal to the frictional force acting on it. So let's rewrite this using some more detailed equations. So remember that the centripetal force is equal to the mass times the square of its speed divided by the radius of curvature. And this is equal to the frictional force, which is the coefficient of friction, in this case static friction, multiplied by the normal force. And remember that normal force, in this case anyway, is equal to the weight, or the mass, times the gravitational acceleration. So the equation we're kind of dealing with here is mv squared over r equals mu s mg. We can cancel out the m's because that's in both sides of the equation. So we have v squared divided by r equals mu sub s g. Now the coefficient of static friction is what we're trying to find. So let's rewrite this equation algebraically to solve for mu sub s. To do that, we just divide both sides of the equation by g. So we have v squared divided by r g. And now let's just plug in the values that were given to us in the problem. So the speed of the car is given as 95 kilometers per hour. We're going to have to convert this into meters per second. So the, the conversion rate for this is that one meter per second is equal to 3.6 kilometers per hour. So to convert from kilometers per hour into meters per second, we just divide by 3.6. And don't forget that the whole speed must be squared. And this is being divided by the radius of curvature, which is given as 125 meters. And then we multiply by the gravitational acceleration, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. If we put this into a calculator, then we find a coefficient of static friction of 0 0.57. And that is the answer to this problem. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please consider subscribing or donating to my Patreon, as that'll help me out in making more videos just like this. If you have a request or a question, leave a comment down below, and I hope you all have a lovely day. Bye-bye.